there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial review, we're gonna be having a look at Digital Product 669's Ultimate Title Pack. Now, in this pack, there are loads of titles, different styles, vintage styles, modern styles, cartoon styles, so different styles that you can use in any kind of project in Final Cut Pro 10. And they're a great time saver if you don't have time to animate your own uh, titles. In this tutorial review, we're gonna be working with some of those titles, we're gonna add them to the timeline, we're gonna look at how we edit them, how we modify them, so some of the different parameters that you can work with. Now, I'm posting regularly uh, tutorials for Final Cut Pro 10 and tutorial reviews as well. Um, so if you like these types of topics, then please do hit the subscribe button and the notifications button. But without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at Digital Product 669's Ultimate Title Pack. So the first thing to kind of note um, that is a good thing to look at when you're shopping for any plugins is where you can use those plugins. So a lot of plugins will allow you to work with them in Final Cut Pro, but they'll be locked for editing. Now the Ultimate Titles Pack and a few of the other plugins from Digital Product 669 actually allow you to open them in Apple Motion as well. So that means that you can go in and if the title or the animation doesn't quite fit what you want it to do, and then you can go and edit the animation um, change some of the graphic objects and stuff like that if you know a little bit about Apple Motion yourself. So we're going to dive into Final Cut Pro and I've installed the Ultimate Titles Pack. Um, and in this pack there's a whole series of different plugins and animations and we're going to basically have a look at one of them um, to just take a look at how we can modify the different titles um, and some of the parameters of those titles and the timing of the titles and that type of thing. So you can see here as we kind of scrub through We've got some nice animations and some different kind of modern and minimal styles and some which will accept a logo where you see the little icon like you can to the left of kinetic typography here and if we scroll down you can see that pops up in a, a few different places um, in some of the titles some of them are kept really nice and simple just simple animations and so we have our kinetic style so some kind of kinetic typography style animations which are quite cool so we can see this whole range of different animations that we can work with. Now we're gonna jump down to some of the vintage animations. And these vintage styles are really great. They're well designed, well animated. And we're gonna jump in and have a look at the vintage 15 style here. So in each of these styles, whenever we kind of drop them on, you'll get some parameters that you can work with and lots of different things that you can adjust like the color. So this is basically what we're gonna to head towards in this. So we're gonna modify the alignment of the type coloring of the arrows and stars in the background um, and then also we'll have a look at how I've added a little tint um, to the background image there as well. So if we select this video in the background we'll go to edit and remove attributes and basically we don't want to remove the volume or the retiming options here we just want to remove the effects so that we can have a look at how we add them and then we will delete the animation that we have on the top here so we'll just select that and hit delete and we'll drag down the Vintage 15 title here. And I've got this time so the surface starts paddling and then just before the end of that clip, we're gonna cut the title just before he kind of hits the top of the wave there. So we've got some nice timing with the video in the background, which is important. So if I have this clip selected and I use Alt and the right square bracket, it's gonna trim that title down to there and it will also move the animation away so actually we're going to just stretch this out a little bit more the last couple seconds of that title don't have anything in them so i just want it to disappear just so we catch that surfer coming to the top of the wave so we'll add the tint and the blur to this first so if we come to our effects across on the right hand side we're going to grab the colorize effect and we'll select a couple of blues here so we'll select a darker blue so the kind of blacks and a lighter blue for the whites and then we'll just increase the intensity of that a little bit and then I'm going to come to my blur options here in the effects and my Gaussian blur. Now if you don't see any of these options I've got up on the right hand side and you don't see the inspector which I've been talking about here then just go to window workspaces and make sure you're on the default workspace and you can reset that by clicking it and then we can bring up our effects on the right by clicking the effects button just across here to the right. And with this selected now, we can just dial down the amount of blur here, but we'll focus on the title for the moment. So we'll come to the point where the title's animated on. And this is a good point to edit our text. Um, we don't want to try and edit our text right at the beginning where we can't see it. So we'll come to the middle of our title, select the title itself, and now we can highlight up here the individual 
uh, points of text and we can also kind of relocate them as well. So we're going to type in surf and we'll just move that to the middle there and camp and again we'll just move that to the middle there. So we have to click on each piece of type before we edit it and then we're going to type in Costa Azul in the middle there and for this type here we're just going to reduce the size of that so basically we'll dial down the, the size of our font and we may need to hover over the numbers here and just drag up and down to get that font just the, the right size so it's aligned nicely in the middle there. So now that we've got the text set up, if we keep our surf title selected, we can come to our title options, our title inspector up at the top right here. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of different options for things like the color of our backdrops here. So if we select this, we can change the color of our backgrounds there. So we'll add a little bit of a yellow to this one. And if we've got colors that we want to use in other spots here, if we click on this, we can drag that color into our swatches across here and keep it. And now if we go back to another color, we can use that swatch again. So you can see we can repeat those elements. So basically we're saving a series of swatches here in our colors board. And that is a system Mac system uh, color board rather than just the Final Cut Pro. So you can use that in other applications as well. And we can set a kind of orange for our Costa as well there. And for our color three, which are arrows in the background, we'll just lighten these. Actually, we'll go for a little bit of a magenta there. So a nice kind of bright summer feel to this. And then we'll leave the other kind of colors as is. So basically we can modify any of the colors of the text and the background color that we have here. We can also turn off the build in and build out as well. So that's handy if you want this to hold on screen until the edit. So you can see now I have my animation at the beginning, but it doesn't animate at the end. So basically if I want to just fade this out at the end, for instance, I can do that um, or I can keep the the build out option which we'll do here and that will keep the animation as we move through that title. So let's come back to the middle here and if we scroll down um, you can see we've got some options for the title position so we can change where that is located we'll leave that as is and if we modify things in Final Cut Pro then we can always use this little hooked arrow to the right of the property we're changing in the inspector to reset that so that appears in plugins that you've bought and installed and also the kind of built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro. And then we've got some options for the title scale so we can in increase it and decrease it. Um, and then we've also got some options for the shape width as well. So if we want this shape width to kind of match the surf a bit better and the shape height to kind of match it a bit better, we can modify that. And then we can also modify the second shape width as well. There are also offsets for the top and bottom ribbons as well, so we can offset those. There are also offsets for the top and bottom ribbons as well, so we can offset those until we've got the design looking just like we want to. And there are also offsets for the stars on the left and right as well, so we can get those positioned and kind of matching our type. I think this looks pretty good for the moment. Uh, if we scroll down and um, we've got some other options for our text so we've got things like the, the tracking uh, for our type so we can modify the tracking um, and we've also got tracking for the other type boxes too so if we increase the tracking of surf here a little bit we can then move that back. The yellow line here means it's snapping to the middle which is what we want and then come back to the title inspector we can scroll down and we've got the tracking for camp as well and again we can just snap that back to the middle so those are the main properties um, really easy to edit uh, in the ultimate title pack and in lots of the other digital product 669's plugin packs and I guess the the kind of real question when you're buying your plugin packs is knowing that they're going to work well that you've got the control over the parameters that you want to 
edit. So things like the, the font we can still modify here in most uh, plugin packs where you're adding type. Um, but we've also got this kind of massive amount of animations that we can use in our designs as well. So whether we're creating a vintage look or we're looking for some kind of retro 80s animations, the Ultimate Titles Pack has a huge number of animations. And in my opinion, for the $35 that you're paying for this, um, there's no way that you could do this much animation in that amount of time um, and, and save money. So actually, if you're needing a lot of animation in your video, in your, your YouTube videos or other videos that you're creating for different platforms, then this Ultimate Titles Pack is definitely worth a look and worth exploring. I hope that's been useful. I'll leave some links below for the Ultimate Titles Pack so you can take a bit more of a look at it um, on their website. Um, and if you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial or the next tutorial review.